President Lyndon Johnson played a pivotal role in financing higher education. Governments have many competing demands for financial support. Funding education and other government programs and initiatives are expensive. Any spending should be tempered by physical responsibility and by looking carefully at the spending's impact. When a government spends more than it collects in taxes, it runs a budget deficit. It then needs to borrow. When government borrowing becomes especially large and sustained, it can substantially reduce the financial capital available to private sector firms, as well as lead to trade imbalances and even financial crises. The chart on the left shows the potential results when the budget deficit rises or the budget surplus falls. The chart on the right shows the potential results when the budget deficit falls or budget surplus rises. We see that a government's budget impacts three things. First, domestic private investment, which are investments by domestic companies in countries in a country's future production capacity. Second, private savings, which is based on the saving versus spending trends of a population. Lastly is the balance of import versus exports, or the trade balance of a, com a country. Financial capital is another name for currency or the value that currency holds in global trade. Each country demands and supplies this financial capital to grow their economies. A country can supply its own financial capital through its own savings, denoted by the S in the equation. These are savings by individuals or firms. The other components of supply is the trade balance. If imports are greater than exports, then financial capital is flowing in as a supply. The opposite is also possible. The demand side of financial capital is private non-governmental investment, denoted by the I in the equation. G, or governmental spending, minus T, taxation, is the other component of the demand side. As governments demand financial capital, this is a budget deficit. The United States has run a budget deficit for over 30 years, with the exception of 1999 and 2000. Military expenditures, entitlement programs, and the decrease in tax revenue coupled with increased safety net support during the Great Recession are major contributors to the dramatic increases in the deficit after 2008. A rising budget deficit may result in a fall in domestic investment, a rise in private savings, or a rise in the trade deficit. The following slides discuss each of these possible effects in more detail. The connection between private savings and the flows of international capital play a role in budget deficits and surpluses. Consequently, government borrowing and private investment sometimes rise and fall together. For example, the 1990s show a pattern which reduced government borrowing, helped, which helped to reduce the crowding out so that more funds are available for private investment. Crowding out occurs when government borrowing soaks up available financial capital and leaves less for private investment in physical capital. The overall quantity of financial capital is at hand here. But we can also see that interest rates or the price of financial capital also changes as the economy falls into a recession or recovers from one. This graph further illustrates the idea of crowding out from the perspective of the impact on interest rates. In the financial market, an increase in government borrowing can shift the demand curve for financial capital to the right from DO to D1. As the equilibrium interest rate shifts from EO to E1, the interest rate rises from 5% to 6% in this example. The higher interest rate is one economic mechanism by which government borrowing can crowd out private investment. This graph shows that government spending on education was continually increasing up until 2006, where it leveled off until 2008, when it increased dramatically. Since 2010, spending has t steadily decreased. This type of government spending can increase human capital and increase production in the economy. This investment may, of course, have impacts 
and the financial capital needed for the investment, which often leads to deficit spending. The theory of Ricardian equivalence suggests that any increase in government borrowing will be offset by additional private savings, while any decrease in government borrowing will be offset by reduced private savings. Sometimes, this theory holds true and sometimes it does not hold true at all. One thing is certain, deficit spending causes a gap in financial capital needed for investment in the economy. This gap can be filled by one of two things, domestic private investment or foreign investment. Foreign investment accompanies a trade deficit typically, where imports are greater than exports. A government budget deficit coupled with a trade deficit is often called a twin deficit. In some countries, this pattern of a twin deficit as sets the stage for international financial investors first to send their funds to a country and cause an appreciation of its exchange rate, and then to pull their funds out and cause a, dep a depreciation of the exchange rate and financial crisis as well. This all depends on whether funding of deficits comes from international financial investors or private domestic investors. In the 1980s, the budget deficit and the trade deficit declined at the same time. However, since then the deficits have stopped being twins. The trade deficit grew smaller in the early 1990s as the budget deficit increased, and then the trade deficit grew larger in the 1990s as the budget deficit turned into a surplus. In the first half of the 2000s, both budget and trade deficits increased. But in 2009, the trade deficit declined as the budget deficit increased. These two deficits do not always have to move in the same direction because the other parts of the supply and demand components of financial markets also change at the same time. Imagine that the U.S. government increases it's borrowing, and the funds come from European financial investors. To purchase U.S. government bonds, these European investors will need to demand more U.S. dollars because you can only buy U.S. government bonds with U.S. dollars. They will demand U.S. dollars on the foreign exchange markets, causing the demand for U.S. dollars to shift to the right from DO to D1. European financial investors as a group will also be less likely to supply U.S. dollars to foreign exchange markets because they'll use them to buy bonds, causing the supply of U.S. dollars to shift from SO to S1. The equilibrium exchange rate strengthens from 0.9 euros per dollar at EO to 1.05 euros per dollar at E1. This can all stem from deficit spending by governments and the connected need for financial capitals to fund the deficit. Interest rates for government debt instruments like bonds are often adjusted for reasons like the perceived riskiness of the borrower. Bonds from the country of Turkey, for example, may be more risky and have a higher interest rate than bonds from country, countries like Sweden or Germany. In conclusion, governments that borrow financial capital are impacting the domestic investment levels, the domestic saving levels, and the trade balance of their country. If this is done in a prudent and strategic way, this can help a country progress economically. Or if done in a non-sustainable way, it may lead to economic turmoil.